Our rivers in this country are in dire straits. They need our help. As an angler, I know and I see firsthand on a day-to-day -day basis just how degraded our rivers are, how abused our rivers are. And now is the time to do something about it. Otherwise, it's gonna be way too late. I'm Jim Murray and I'm an activist angler. And here we are on the glorious Upper Itchum. I'm stood in the middle of nature in the, in the south of England in a beautiful chalk stream, listening to wild birds, looking for wild trout, seeing insect hatches, and life is glorious when I'm in this setting. I think as anglers, we need to harvest and pull that passion, that energy, that information and that knowledge and unify ourselves in, into a collective. We are custodians of the river, whether we like it or not. The fundamental difference between a chalk stream and any other river is that it is ground fed. The water around it in the catchment area sinks into the aquifer and then comes up through springs. And in doing so, it's filtered by the chalk. So it should be very clean. It should have a very balanced pH level and it should have a pretty constant temperature. As a fisherman, as an angler, as a fly angler, that's great news because the invertebrate life on a chalk stream should be abundant. There should be all manner of, of insect life for the trout to feed on. So strictly speaking, this particular stretch should be in rude health. Sadly, it's not. It's in trouble, just like the others are. The Itchen still has a small head of wild Atlantic salmon much further downriver in the, in the tidal waters. And they're an incredibly rare species. And once upon a time, they would have been traveling and spawning as high up as where we are now, which is some 25, 30 miles from the sea. And salmon, of course, thrive off cold, clean water. That's all they need. And that's all, all our rivers need is cold, clean water. And the salmon are a great barometer for a healthy river system. And to say that there are just a few left at the bottom of this river and, the, and at the bottom of the other chalk stream near here, the River Test, is, is a massive signal as to how degraded and abused our chalk streams have come in a relatively short period of time. And if we can restore them, who knows, we might get those salmon back one day. Chalk streams are no different to any other rivers in the UK with the challenges that they face, sadly perhaps slightly more acutely just because they're rarer and because most of them are double SI or triple SI sites. Agriculture is a huge challenge. The runoff from the various chemicals that are used in the fertilizers and the slurry and the silage. This particular stretch is challenged by septic tanks. That's a localized issue, but again, one that happens up and down the country. Septic tanks are still not equipped to take all the chemicals out of the water that is drained into them. And those chemicals, those phosphates end up in the aquifers, which then in time end up in the rivers. Sadly, the water companies, they are constantly applying for permits to basically pull water out of these rivers that really can't can't handle it. If you drain a chalk stream too, too much and you take too much water out, out of it at the wrong time, it's in danger of drying up and that's riverside, that's sacrilegious, that will kill the river. Lower down this river on the lower Richen and on the lower Test, Southern Water have been guilty of pumping raw sewage out into these beautiful chalk streams, which is just mind-blowing that they can get away with that. To the layman, they might look at it and think, oh, that's a really pretty, well-manicured river. From an angler's point of view, it's a steep learning curve and a welcome education as to the health of a river. You indirectly learn about the health of a river when you're looking at flow, you're looking at water temperature, you're looking at habitat, all predominantly to, to learn where the fish may or may not be. But in, in doing that, of course, you're looking at hatches, you're, looking at, you're trying to match the hatch with your fly. There should be much more weed life growing out of the, the riverbed as it is. There's a huge amount of brown algae. I'm not seeing as much invertebrate. I'm not seeing any hatches going off. I'm not seeing many fish. This is all due to pollution of one sort or another. We need to put the brakes on the damage that's being done 
and really affect some change and lobby governments and get rid of ones that aren't doing anything and, and vote for ones that promise to do something and, and keep pressure on our governments to keep improving the state of our waterways, otherwise they're gonna be gone. So look, anglers are in a perfect position to be citizen scientists. We can harvest data, we can measure the, the phosphate, the nitrate, the, the pollution levels in the water, and in doing so, improve the state of our rivers. We can all become citizen scientists. If we become more activist as anglers, if we become more vocal about what we're seeing, the destruction and the abuse we're seeing of our waterways, if we report the pollution that we're seeing, if we just communicate and become more responsible, a little drive and a little passion can translate into a huge amount of action. And that's what I'm trying to achieve with activist anglers.